How's it going guys? John Friedel from JohnFriedel.com here. Uh, I wanted to make a video today kind of showcasing the machine in its entirety. It's pretty much done as far as I'm concerned. I need to, I need to add an encoder for the top of the spindle motor and then I can kind of wire up the ENC threading module and do some rigid tapping. But uh, that's kind of down the road. I don't really need rigid tapping right now. Uh, but I'll get to it. So the first thing that I think makes this machine special is this console right here. The first machine I ever had was a bridge port thread retrofit to run off of Mach 3. And the only way that I had to control the machine was via a keyboard, which got old really, really quick. And I promised myself I would never do it again. So for this machine, I designed a control panel, which I thought would have every button I could possibly use. So we've got, um, obviously, your power on off, uh, an e-stop here, a manual pulse generator. Um, the reset button to reset the servos. This will reference the machine. This will send the machine to the zero point. This will zero the x-axis, zero the y-axis, zero the z-axis. This toggle right here switches between the x, y, and z-axis for the manual pulse generator. This obviously selects the distance that the machine travels per, per pulse from the MPG. This is the analog feed rate override, analog spindle override. These both work really well. Um, obviously start, stop, and feed hold. Up here, these are kind of the tool changer controls. This releases the drawbar, dropping the tool. Um, this will send the turret across. This will send it, drop the turret down. This will, uh, this will override the limits. So you can, you know, if you hit a limit switch, you can back the machine up. This rotates the turret, and this will send the machine to the tool change position, which I have set as G28 right now. This console, oh, and these, and these joysticks here, this is obviously uh, Y back and forth and X back and, back and forth. This is the Z axis up and down. So these joysticks here are super handy. Um, I'm not using them as much as I thought I would because the MPG is just so awesome. Didn't have an MPG on my last machine. Um, so the next thing that I think makes the machine special is that it has a running tool changer. Um, getting a tool changer to run in Mach is not impossible. There's a lot of guys out there that have done it. Some guys just program um, Mach to run the tool changer via Visual Basic and they wire everything into the, uh, the motion controller breakout. But I opted to go the route of a PLC. In here I have an Automation Direct DL06 which um, controls the tool changer. These are the inputs, these are the outputs. It also controls via this cable here, it controls a GS2 drive which runs the spindle. And rather than just being happy with a 3000 RPM spindle, I send the spindle 120 hertz rather than 60 hertz if I want to get the spindle all the way up to uh, 6000 RPM. And I can do that with confidence because I just changed the grease in the spindle bearings which was a blast. If you think you're mechanically inclined and you want a real challenge, pull the spindle out of a CNC machine and, uh, and re-grease the bearings. It will humble you, as it did me, I'm sure. Um, what else, what else, what else? Just cut this fixture plate for a project that I'm working on. Um, these are Mighty Bike clamps, these are pretty awesome. What else, okay, so the motion controller so the motion controller is a CSMIO IPA from CS Labs in Poland. This is, I think, the best motion controller you can buy for a mock retrofit when you're, when you're dealing with kind of a, a larger industrial machine. Um, this right here is the MPG module, and this is the threading module that will allow me to do rigid tapping. Um, these up here are optocouplers. They convert a 12-volt encoder pulse to a 5-volt encoder pulse. Um, and I think they introduce maybe a little bit of lag. They might be why I can't seem to get index homing to work, but I'm not sure. I still have to call CS Labs about that. Obviously, I retained this, uh, this original power source and these servo drives, which um, even though the CS Labs motion controller is a little bit on the pricier side, it's completely worth it in my money because it's easy to configure. It's, it's easy to wire up, it's very intuitive, um, and I get to save the stock servo drives, which saves me a lot of money. 
So that's pretty much it. Be sure to subscribe to see more cool videos um, on uh, mock retrofits and CNC machining and whatnot. Um, yeah, you got some cool projects coming up. You know what I'm saying? What did you say? Is that a an industrial robot? Why, yes. This is a KUKA KRC1 robot that is going to get a spindle right here, a router spindle, so that it can be six-axis machining. That's going to be a huge project. Cool.